sit down with Risto for a moment and discuss a little bit deeper on this clarity and his, his future plans. So, how do you feel the audience uh, got your idea on the clarity? Did they get it? They, they were not very forthcoming with their ideas on, on my, or answers to my questions. <laughs> but hopefully they are waking up. Yeah, yeah, it's still early morning and is the Nespresso stand active there? Maybe they need more, more caffeine. Uh, can you send some espressos to the front? <laughs> yeah, some evening events, we put beer in the front to fill, fill the seats, but uh, not, not, not here today. All right, let's have a little chat about, of course, you know, I want to start with a little bit talk about values. You know, it's a kind of broader, but it's important for us because we feel that in the, maybe you know this when you were filling the ticket details, we were asking about your values. And why is that? That's because of, we believe strongly that when in the long run you want to work with people who share the same values with you. So would, would you, and that's why we put like values-based matchmaking on our tool there, but could you maybe name some value which is important for you in overall? Well, first of all, values mean nothing if you can back them up with actions. Yes. So I would much rather talk to people about what have you done? What, what are the sort of most meaningful actions you have taken. Because if we would go to Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump, they would probably come up with fairly, fairly nice sounding values that they say Honesty. they have. <laughs> yeah, integrity and, and all sorts of stuff. So, but for me, really, the, and again, it's not just the value, it's, it, it's sort of who I think I am. The entrepreneurship is really in the center of that. And, and mm. entrepreneurship, it's not just the word. Yes. The, the way I think about it, maybe there's a short poem that describes that quite well. It goes something like, like this. There are those among us who see things as they are and they ask why. And there are those who see things that never were and they ask why not. Mm. The first people who see the world as it is and ask, why does it work like this? They are scientists. And the second category of people who see things that were never invented don't exist. And they ask, why not? Why not? Maybe I can do that. Yes. And it's about seeing a problem and not thinking about oh, you know, grumbling, why hasn't somebody fixed this? But it's thinking, hey, this is a great opportunity. And of course, combining these two worlds, the world of science, seeing the world and understanding the world with the feeling that, hey, I can do something with that, that mixture of science and entrepreneurship, that's really what this event is all about. Exactly. Wow. That's amazing. And then if you look at a little bit on your uh, 30 years career and also being an investor there and thinking clearly there, so what kind of a... Uh, what kind of, uh, let's say, values or related this kind of uh, around has impacted your decision making and success? Because you've been successful in the business world. So if you like a look back on specifically related to how you've been thinking things and the human relation, is there something that stands out in the long way? That what's, what's been, is there something that has stuck with you all, all, all along? Yeah, first of all, I have been surprised way too often. I have been constantly unprepared for what is happening. So maybe the one thing that has turned out to be really meaningful is, is really trying to learn all the time mm, mm. and finding the, the enjoyment in learning. The curiosity. And really trying to, trying to think about why did I fail? Why didn't I see that? Why, why did I miss that? Mm. And then start to sort of formalize that into a toolbox. So what tool sets can I use to think a little bit more clearly next time mm -hmm. and to be a little bit better prepared next time and not be as surprised by something that in hindsight I think it was obvious. Mm -hmm. So learning is, is really something. Then second thing that I want to say, it's when you find good people and there aren't that many really good people, when you find them, work actively to keep them close to you. 
don't take it as self-evident that they will remain in your company or they will remain friends with you or they will work for you just without you making an effort. But make a deliberate effort. Just sit down and think, okay, mm. that person, I, I really think that he, he or she is somebody I want to keep close to me. Mm. So how can I do that? Yes, yeah, like we as entrepreneurs are working for our employees. Leader, than, yeah, leadership yeah. is a service profession. Mm, mm. Leadership is just serving people. Well, obviously, this uh, improvement along the time has brought you also success on the investment side. You mentioned you had a couple of unicorns there on the on, well, on the portfolio. Couple. I have five. Well, five soon, and perhaps, <laughs> and hopefully you'll find one more. I'm sure there will be future unicorns yeah. here today. I have no doubts about that, definitely. So what kind of things excite you the most today? And when you think about this breakthrough technology coming in the near years, is there something there that which really like pumps you up today? Yeah, the, the one thing that has always been the number one for, or the number one indicator of a future success is serial entrepreneurs. So mm. teams that have done it already. And they don't need to be sort of high-flying entrepreneurs that you know, sell their company. They can be people who are part of entrepreneurial teams, not necessarily the founder, mm. but close to the, the CEO in the leadership team, for example. And when they want to set up a new business, a new company, that's really the, the best possible beginning. But answering your real question, the thing that I'm really intrigued by is, is quantum mechanics. Not just quantum computing, but quantum mechanics more broadly. And one reason why I'm so intrigued by it is that I find it really hard to understand. <laughs> I have tried to study quantum computer programming which is very different from classical programming. And it's, it's such a weird world. It's not linear, is it? Uh, well, that's the easiest part of it to understand. But really, how do, you, how do you program? You need to think in a different way to, to come up with the, the algorithms that can be implemented in quantum computing. Mm. It's a little bit like... Machine learning was for me when I started studying machine learning and trying to understand that different way of reaching conclusions through machine learning neural networks and, and other machine learning algorithms, which really highlighted how different it is from the, the perceived human way of thinking. Mm -hmm. It might not be that different from the actual way of human thinking, but the per perception of human thinking is very, very different. Okay, so quantum, and, and how many quantum-related uh, companies you have in your portfolio today? One. Just one? Yeah. Which one is it? It's uh, one science. One science. I think one, I think maybe they might, might be here today. I think they, are, they might be here. So is it a unicorn in the uh, making? No, not, not yet. It's in the making, yeah. Yeah. And then how about more on the, on, the, on the portfolio side? Do you see, is there any like good news there or you refer possible IPOs coming or? Uh, the IPOs are postponed. Yes, it's something. All, all over the world, but that's not really a problem. I'm a very patient investor. Actually, I, I prefer companies that don't exit. Mm. IPO is a good exit. I can stay on as a as a shareholder, yes, but yes. I'm not very exit driven. I'm more focused on how to develop the companies and make them successful and make the, the founding teams successful. Yes, yes. That's and so there important. are lots of good things happening. Recessions don't really hit startups for the most part. There's it's always the belief in the future. There's always growth, there's always change in startups in a different way from the large corporations. Yes. In recessions. In recession, there's so much opportunity and there's still hungry people out there. Brilliant minds. 
we have amazing people who are getting better. So we need people like you and other investors in the room to really back these entrepreneurs, you know. And some of the best tech companies have been founded during recessions. There's a lot. There's a lot. I think it was Google. Google, well, Google is yeah, one of if them. If you count IT bubble as a recession. Oh, well, it definitely was. It, <laughs> that was a difficult time. Difficult time, yes. So this is my, my fourth mm. and similar then, uh, period now. Okay, and a very special, little bit looking forward also an actual placing the bets on, on those investments and also on your learning side. And you mentioned the quantum already. Is there anything else that you are looking at maybe in the near future would like to, you know, dig into deeper and maybe make investments? Is there something specific area or... Is it more people? Well, there are prevent? some med tech areas that I have been looking into over the last few years, also as a as a learning opportunity. But it's it's still Digital fundamentally about the the teams and the the concepts that they have come up with. Mm. The domains are sort of a secondary consideration. Yeah, and whatever idea, most chance it won't last there. Any any plans won't last there. I, Survive the action. Yeah. Mm. And how about the little bit, we have a few minutes left. A little bit about the, you know, we are here about to talk about also the Nordic deep tech ecosystem, right? So what do you see like the, how is the, well, how is the say, ecosystem you see today? And is there something you like to, you know, change or add it to make it better? That What do we need more to make even more great success stories come, coming from the Nordics and Baltics? Well, definitely one thing that I would like to change, it's not on the startup side or entrepreneurial side, it's on the, the government side. Mm -hmm. Like, why hasn't Finland taken the lessons from Estonia that could be, or could have been taken? Like E-Finland? Yeah, there's, there's, there's things that are happening, but we are so slow. Sweden in some areas has made some great moves, but they are also just like we Finns, we are just too happy with what we have. Mm -hmm. We should be hungrier. So creating the best environment for tech startups to prosper, that should really be the goal. You know, obviously Finland, the immigration service have been a little bit slow, but now I'm hearing that it's actually really improving. I've heard even Expert visas getting in two weeks, which I promised a year ago. But that's, I have, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And then the entrepreneur visa, startup visas, it's getting bit by bit there. So hopefully those those promises will be, you know, claimed and we can ease ease the access of for the talent. And now this very negative exit tax, I think they're gonna scrape that also from Finland. And uh, anything else more you would see to, to have in in the Nordic region. Well, the area where I have been really very happy about and, and excited about has been the Baltics. Yes. So I spent more time in, in, Bal in the Baltics over the last couple of years and I made three investments there as well. And there's lots of great entrepreneurial spirit. So maybe more cooperation between Finnish, Swedish and Baltic companies and investors and just mingling those ecosystems even better. Yes, I think that would be a welcome, welcome thing on both sides of the, the Gulf. 100%. That's what, this is one of the reasons why we are here today, of course. And we have people from Taltec, I, I think from Tallinn, we have somebody from Tartu University, also from, from Latvia, we have people coming. So uh, I think we are taking the first steps towards making more cross-border collaborations, obviously. I believe that's the key to success. And how do we together as a, region can show to the bigger world because we are so small region here somebody can go as finland sweden yeah but if we go as the nordics is it japanese you know american investors they look at us as one place so definitely doing things together 100 percent we're a little bit running out of time soon but we have a is there any question that you wish people would ask you but they never ask because you've been asked so many questions over your career no, Henry Kissinger once, when he, he came to a press meeting, a Q&A, his, his question to the press was, what questions do you have today for my answers? And 
I think that, that is a nice way of communicating that he knows what he wants to say and he will say it regardless of what questions will be asked. Mm -mm. And maybe I'll, I'll just rest, rest it here. Rest with you. Okay, fine. Does any of you in the audience have questions for Risto? Uh, well, it's your lucky day, Hubert. Uh, in about 15 minutes, Risto will hold a full Q&A session downstairs in a workshop room. So it's a one-in-a-lifetime opportunity to dig in deeper. And Risto will be there. Ask me anything, right? So thank ask, you so much, Risto. Ask, ask me anything, and I'll answer anything. <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much, Thank Risto. You. Let's give him a big hand.